Isha with the restart and uh, it's taken by Cobden down on that right-hand side and he makes an excellent ground up to the 22. Isha seemed to want to try and pin Nottingham back in that corner from the restart and try and use the restart to really get territory, but it hasn't worked for them because Nottingham get up to the halfway line, but the referee's blown a penalty. Uh, Alex Walker just getting in there to try and pull some of the Nottingham lads out of that. He said, it's our penalty, we'll have the ball and we're going to do something with it. Mike Whitehead just consults Chris York behind him. And they're going to go for goal, which is interesting. They take a bit of time to decide what to do with that penalty, where they're going to go uh, down the line and kick for touch, what sort of options. And I think sometimes that betrays a side that are uh, coming off uh, second best early on, but um, this will certainly buoy them if they can get this. It's a long way out there with the angle as well. It it's, is. Uh, it's, it's right on the halfway line and uh, in line with down the field. It's on the 15-metre uh, line, parallel with the touch line. So uh, it's certainly going to be a very difficult kick for Whitehead was at uh, Rotherham for five years, England under-21s, London Welsh for a year, so he'll be possibly welcoming a few old friends down at Isha next yeah. week. We wish you could tell you if he was kicking into the wind or not, but as we've already <laughs> pointed out, there are no swirling, clues from the flat. Swirling around this stadium. Whitehead then, right-footed. Oh, he's certainly given it a lot. Oh, it's a superb kick! Um, that's Magnificent, gonna, wasn't it? Wonderful strike. That's, that's going to give Isha some real heart, because if they can get into positions like that and bring infringements from Nottingham, then that's going to give them a platform to start getting some points ticking over the board. Yeah, wonderful strike from it just inside their own half. So, yeah, something to, uh, for Isha to go forward with. 13-3 after 27 minutes. Well, they've already got as many points as they managed to score last week against Worcester, so surely they can only build from here. Slemon gets us... Uh, sorry, Arledge gets us underway. Uh, for Nottingham the ball was tapped forward just inside their own 10 metre line by Isha Barnum Barnum again just right in the middle of the field played that to Arledge but uh, Arledge fed it on to Callum Green and between the two of them the ball has gone forward referee playing advantage and Crookshanks brought into the side this afternoon or today as uh, Neil Taylor unfortunately had a dead leg, dead leg that just wouldn't go away the ball was hoisted high there, and uh, Nottingham have taken that into the 22. It was a good chase from Sam Smith, but he wasn't able to do anything about the ball re being recycled for Nottingham. And uh, ball back from Barnum, and I think that one's going to find touch from Slam, and it does. Nearly bounces on one of the fans <laughs> in the stand. Um, but Isha now, well, with a potential platform for an attack from uh, from the set piece. Yeah, they find themselves again in Nottingham's half, which is good, and as you say, uh, also with a line out as well. Clive Stewart Smith uh, just uh, perhaps coming over to, to chat with his uh, hooker there to find out exactly how they're going to play this. And Isha, maybe this is a good uh, idea, Nick. You know, taking the time a little, thinking about what they're going to do. It's their it's their line out, so they can uh, afford a, a few moments. Well, they're thrown to the front. Sam Stitcher and uh, and Carl Rudsky were waiting at the back, but it ended up going to. John Downey at the front of the line and Isha have kept control of it five metres inside the Nottingham half good option of Chris York he was past it there from, uh, from uh, Stuart Smith he thought about shipping it on again but the Nottingham defence was there Stuart Smith picks up from the back and again Nottingham put him to ground before he's had much chance to think about what he's going to do possibly needs to get that ball away a little bit quicker rather than taking the steps that he is if he's going to give Isha a chance to get on the front foot, but uh, at the breakdown, he takes the ball away again, gives it to Whitehead, Whitehead tries a shorter chip through there, tries to cause some problems for John Johnston, and uh, in fact there was an offside. Now as, then, another penalty. As that kick went forward, and indeed another penalty, so a chance for Isha and Mike Whitehead. <laughs> and it's going to be another long one. It's right from the middle of the park. This right on the halfway line. Well, this one technically is going to be shorter than the last one. Yes, he's indeed, no angle. So yes. he, although sometimes kickers prefer a little bit of an angle. Well, don't they, they do. He's not going to have the chance to uh, draw this one round with his right foot. But uh, it's certainly another opportunity. And now this would, you know, 13-6. All of a sudden, you feel a lot better about yourself, don't you? And um, although Nottingham have had uh, a lot of the territory, they uh, they certainly haven't bossed the game completely. And I think this would uh, change things with uh, half time. What, just 10 minutes away now? Yes, indeed. So Mike Whitehead stands to the left of the ball. It's just on the edge of the uh, the centre circle that you can see on the football field. He's given it one hell of a hit, and it's through the uprights. 
And, Certainly uh, had the legs, didn't it? My goodness, made it with a long, long way to spare. Yes, indeed. Well, 13-6 now the score to Nottingham here at Meadow Lane. It's almost a Thorburn-esque kick there. And it's enormous, wasn't it? We're sticking with the 70s theme for the evening here. I think it was 84, it? wasn't it? <laughs> so. Was it 84? What's five years between friends? <laughs> Slemon gets us... Uh, sorry. Arledge, keep wanting to call him Slemon. That'll be the Isha fly half. Uh, Arledge gets us underway. And uh, it's well gathered by Isha this time. They haven't done too well from the restart so far this evening, but that was much better. Magnificent kick. And uh, Stuart Smith gets rid of that one from the base of the ruck that was formed just inside their own 22. And it just shows you practicing those restarts and getting those balls away, very, very important because it's the first one that they've got right. And they've managed to get Nottingham back into their own half with a line out on the 10 metre line. Craig Hammond, the captain, stood at the front of the line. Johnny Harris ready to support him. He dummy jumps. It goes to the middle. It was a little bit scrappy, but it was eventually tapped down by Callum Green. Isha nearly read that line out, but unfortunately not quite as uh, Nottingham uh, go through the phases and out it goes again down the line. Barnum, Arledge. Now he sliced that one slightly, but... Uh, the ball sits up as it makes its first bounce. Very brave jump in from Mike Whitehead. He's at the bottom of that ruck. And, uh, well, it's been wrestled in the contact point by Nottingham. Whitehead on the floor rolling. He may not be in too good a, good a way. We hope he's all right. And uh, it's come now for Tom Youngs. Tom Youngs who feeds Craig Hammond down on this near side, five metres in from this near touchline, just on the 10-metre line inside Isha's half. Barnum. Feeds to Nottingham's number four, Callum Green. Six foot four, 20 year old, double registration with Tigers. He's played for England under 20s. Ball then dropped forward, uh, oh sorry, kicked forward by uh, the scrum half. But uh, oh, there's a, <laughs> it, it was caught in the 22 and then pumped up field. And, and then Dan Hemingway did very well to catch the ball on the touchline. And he's fed it in field while there's some medical attention being given to Whitehead on the far side. And there's possibly not a lot more that Sam Ulf can do than boot the ball downfield. And the ball rolls towards the 22. And in fact, the referee has decided that in the circumstances, it's probably best. Mm. Not quite uh, sure what happened there, Nick, because he was caught on the touchline, but his foot was in touch. Now, did that count as an instant line out? Because I certainly had his foot well in touch. So. He, di he did. Uh, uh, not quite sure... Uh, whether the touch just spotted that or whether he was happy with the way he restarted, but uh, certainly Mike Whitehead is down at the moment over on the far side. He is moving, he is now sitting up, so that's a good sign. Uh, but uh, he ended up trying to catch the ball and it, it just wobbled in the wind and was ended up quite in front of him. So as he went down to catch it, he went down almost onto his elbows and, uh, well, his support and the defence were there very quickly, so... Uh, it's a massively brave thing to do, wasn't it, under the circumstances? Because uh, the ball was one of those uh, situations where everybody was waiting to see exactly how it was going to bounce and yeah. what it was going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he did. He did very well indeed. And uh, well, the crowd here, very good support for Nottingham, but also keen to ensure that their opponents are in fine fettle to give them a good game. And they applaud Mike Whitehead as he gets back to his feet. And the referee is going to get us restarted where the ball came to rest with a scrum to Nottingham. Isha slowly turning things round, though, you know, Nick. I mean, quite apart from those six points they've managed to get, I mean, part of that is because of the pressure that they've managed to exert, uh, and more and more they find themselves in Nottingham's half, and it's something to take with them into half-time, isn't it? It is indeed, as, uh, well, that scrum collapses. We've got six minutes left of this first half. Here for BBC Surrey and Sussex, I'm Nick Heath alongside me, Dominic Busby. BBC Surrey will be covering every single Isha rugby game, home and away this season. Live reports into Saturday Sport each week, including pre-match and post-match interviews with the players and management. And don't forget, there's regular stories on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Surrey forward slash sport. Now then, ball at the bottom of the ruck, and it's well away by Barnum, but he had Clive Stewart-Smith for company. He did well to make sure he got it away cleanly, and the high ball comes up, and Whitehead went for it, and unfortunately he dropped it forward. And uh, running forward as the recipient of that was John Johnston, and he's managed to offload, and there's a try in the corner, and that was, well, desperately unlucky for Whitehead, who only a couple of moments ago was lying prone on the turf. And then a big hanging high ball. Showed a lot of character to go for it, I think. 
um, rose to try and get that uh, ball and unfortunately just didn't quite manage to pouch it properly. And as a result, uh, there we are, they find themselves again, Nottingham uh, in in the corner. That makes the score 18-6 at the moment, of course, with the kick to come. Cobden again then, touching down in the right-hand corner. Two for him. And that was unlucky for Isha, really. Yeah, I don't think uh, they deserved that, shall we say, but... Um, that's the harsh reality of uh, rugby in the second tier of the country, isn't it? You know, these clubs aren't going to give you any time to, uh, to make your mistakes and find your feet in the division. No, or indeed recover from when you've had some treatment on the field. I mean, that high ball came straight down on Whitehead. He was just outside his 22, went up for it. He got his hands around it, but the ball just came out of the top, almost bounced off his biceps as he caught it. And, uh, well, the lucky recipient was Johnston. He fed Cobden and there was nobody at home in the corner for Isha. Conversion now then. Arledge. Touch judges look at each other, it's bisected them. And it's another two points on the board. So, with just a few moments to go towards the end of this first half, Nottingham 20, Isha 6. Yeah, a harsh scoreline that, Nick, I think. Um, as I say, going into the... Uh, the uh, half-time interval just, uh, what, three minutes away now, but uh, Isha hoofed the ball well down into the uh, Nottingham 22 as Nottingham tried to run the ball out of their own 22. Yes, indeed, Barnum just waiting at the back of that. He's uh, supported by his props who give him a bit of shielding. You get a little less shielding these days with the modern athletic prop than you might have done 10, 15 years ago, but he does well to get the box kick up and it's well recovered. This time he feeds Arledge, who... Pumps that downfield, and there's nothing the running Whitehead can do to stop that. Going into touch right on the 22-metre line, a very good tactical kick from Nottingham, and, uh, well, the line-out will be with Isha, but once again they're finding themselves with a set-piece in their own half, and, uh, well, Alex Walker will want to make very sure of this line-out in order to try and take the pressure off. Alex Walker then. Makes the throw. It's to the front of the lineup, but it was, uh, I think, one more by Nottingham. And uh, the referee, in fact, is playing an advantage for the knock on. I thought yeah. a Nottingham hand got to it first, but uh, he's a little closer to the action down there. And it's fed by Barnum onto Craig Hammond. Barnum again. Arledge. Oh, and that's a lovely miss pass to Jackson, who's come off his left wing. Jackson brought down initially by Phil McKenzie, but he's straight back to his feet and nobody can seem to bring Jackson down, but actually the last attempt that, that did bring him down, uh, which was from uh, from the Isha man, he eventually knocked it forward, the referee playing advantage, and in fact Isha get the chance to clear their lines. And, uh, well, Callum Afoni was, was possibly trying to gather that as it galloped its way into touch, but he avoided it with his hands. Uh, or did he, be, in fact? It'll be an Isha line-out. No, he did, he touched it, looked uh, very disappointed about that. Now, we've got a little bit of uh, hugging and kissing going down on the near <laughs> side here. Uh, Craig Hammond just having a little bit of afters with Sam Smith. That's not a very fair match-up in my book. Craig Hammond, the captain. Kiwi, born in Singapore, schooled in Tonga. 31 years of age. And Isha have lost it on their own line-out again, but the referee's blown up. It was a knock-on from Isha. This is going to, be an, going to have to be an area that, uh, that Schmidt looks at if it continues to, to cause them problems in the second half because their line-out hasn't been strong. They seem to be at a loss every time they have a line-out to know exactly uh, what they're going to do with it and, take, as a result, take a lot of time, which doesn't go down well with the, uh, the home fans here. No, maybe. indeed. Some of the cloud coming down, uh, just saw it blustering past the uh, the floodlights here at Meadow Lane in Nottingham. About 12 degrees here and dropping. But uh, a lovely chip kick through from Arledge and it's well gathered on the right-hand side by Jack Cobden. Two tries to his name already. Barnum with a short ball to Callum Afoni and he tries to gallop through the gap uh, where there was nobody at home. Uh, right next to the ruck, just, out, just inside the 22 and they're in front of the posts now, about five to ten metres inside the 22. Barnum fed Sempere. Sempere tried a short ball, but, uh, in fact, it was just a touch forward as he tried that, and, uh, well, a let-off for Isha because there was a, a danger that Nottingham were putting together another attack that was going to end up with them crossing the whitewash.